Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about Abnormal Involuntary Movement Scale, AIMS. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. In this video, I will be discussing about AIMS scale and, and how to use this AIMS scale. This Abnormal Involuntary Movement Scale is used to assess tardive dyskinesia. What is tardive dyskinesia? It is a repetitive polymorphous involuntary movements that are commonly observed in the orofacial region that is tongue, lips, jaw and facial region but it can also occur in the periorbital, neck, trunk and extremities after the exposure to antipsychotics or else D2 receptor blockading agents. TD is commonly delayed onset that is after 3 months but however acute onset Parkinsonism, dystonia, akathisia is also seen. But however, this abnormal involuntary movement scale is used for both acute and also for the late onset. This TD can be persistent and potentially debilitating hyperkinetic movements affecting any part of the body. These movements are typically coriform or choreothetoid or athetosis of the extremities and axial muscles. TD can be associated with akathisia, extrapyramidal symptoms, dystonia, myoclonus, pain disorder and so forth. Hence, this AIM scale for the assessment and screening of this abnormal involuntary movement is very essential when you are giving antipsychotics, especially in psychiatric field. Let's discuss about this abnormal involuntary movement scale and it is used in tardive syndrome, tardive dyskinesia, tardive dystonia, akathisia and various other movement syndromes. This is how the simple abnormal involuntary movement scale. It takes in an experienced and around 2 minutes, if in a person with a trained around 5 minutes and it is easily trainable and it has 14 items and the last 4 items are for dental and you can see the various domains. There are five domains which need to be assessed in using abnormal involuntary movement scale. Let's look into each one of this domain. The first domain is the facial and oral movements. You will be assessing whether there, is, whether there are any abnormal movements involving the oral area that is perioral region, lingual and also the basically the facial muscles. Once you have done the facial and oral movements, you will move into the second, that is extremities, that is upper limb and lower limb. Looking into, especially, we have to focus on the extremities. Here, the TDs are very common. Further, the trunk movements, that is, rocking movements of the thorax. And finally, the global judgment involving, especially asking whether he is aware of these movements. And finally, the dental status. Although the dental status comes in the end, when we start our examination, you need to start with the dental asking whether there is any dental problems. So let's go into the AIMS. As I mentioned, the AIMS scale has 14 items rating for involuntary movements. There are three items exclusively for dental care. And the instrument used here for the assessment is a chair which is with hard surface with no arms rest. That is very essential. Again, I am repeating, the chair to be used in the examination should be hard, firm, one without arm rest. That is very essential to be used. As soon as you start, you need to code for demographic details, name, date and prescribing practitioner. Now you have to rate and you need to rate on five important codes. 0. There is no abnormal movement. 1 is minimal. Minimal without impairing any daily activity. The next one is mild, which very rarely comes in the way of functioning. Moderate. Here the abnormal movements come in the moderate way of functioning. And the severe. Please remember, when you rate, and rate the highest severity when you are observing these movements spontaneously. But, if you are using any activation procedures, such as thumb tapping, clenching of fist, clenching of teeth, any kind of 
activation procedure you are using in such a scenario you need to score one less on activation procedure if the patient scores three that is moderate severity you need to score mild that is one way of understanding aims severity that means these procedures can be seen only through activation let's look into the instruction first and the foremost the clinician asks the patient about the contagion of his teeth or dentures you need to ask whether you have any problem with regard to teeth do you have any dentures that needs to be asked and to be documented and also the patient cannot have anything in his mouth such as bubble gum chewing or else any kind of tobacco item should not be there you need to ask this patient to spit it out that means he should be not having any dentures and also he need to have do not have anything in his mouth at the same time you need to ask the patient to remove his shoes and socks this is very important if a patient has tardu dyskinesia in the limbs and it invariably is seen in the toes or in the fingers hence if the patient is wearing gloves or else socks or shoes need to be asked to be removed now the patient is asked if he has seen any unusual movements in the mouth face hands or legs that means you need to ask for his insight has he recently seen any abnormal movements because one third of the patients are not aware of their tardive dyskinesias that is abnormal movements only two third of the patients are aware whoever is aware of these abnormal movements sometimes they try to suppress these movements hence you need to do activation procedure to get these abnormal movements for coding before starting the procedure you need to observe the patient that means when the patient is waiting in a room observe the patient observe the patient how he walks into your chamber see how is his manner demeanor whether there is any abnormal movements whether there is any problem in his posture how is he walking is there any difficulties is there any dystonias any abnormal movements from top to bottom need to be observed once the patient comes to your chamber offer the chair which does not have armrest request the patient to sit comfortably with the legs slightly apart and both the feet flat on the floor and remember if he is wearing the shoes and socks you need to request him to remove that and in this step 1 the patient will be keeping his hands resting on his thighs in the step 1 you will be observing for any movements from head to toe in the second step you will request the patient to sit with the hands hanging unsupported if he is a male he has to hang his hands between his legs and if it is a female and wearing a dress hanging over the both the side of the knees can be done again you will be observe the patient from head to toe for any abnormal movements moving to the third step here you need to give instruction to the patient and you have to say when i give an instruction you will be keep that for 10 seconds and i'll observe and you need to repeat once again the third step is ask the patient to open his mouth and observe for the tongue is there any fasciculation or movements ask the patient to keep it for 10 seconds after he does it again you have to repeat the step number 3 now moving to the step number 4 ask the patient to protrude his tongue and see for fasciculation and abnormal movements and the patient will be protruding his tongue for 10 seconds and again step fourth will be repeated this is how the abnormal involuntary movement scale that is the step number 1 looking for muscles of facial expression that is movements for forehead eyebrows periorbital area cheeks frowning blinking smiling and grimacing if they are there and how severely it is there so 0 1 2 3 4 you are going to code moving to the second look for the lips and perioral area that is puckering pouting and smacking movements third point you are going to code for jaw is there any biting clenching chewing mouth opening and lateral movements the fourth one is look for the tongue once inside the floor and the other one protruding the tongue 
here you will be coding here moving to the fifth point ask the patient to tap his or her thumb with each finger as rapidly as possible for 10 to 15 seconds he will be doing in this fashion as fast as possible for 10 to 15 seconds when the patient is doing this activation procedure you will be observing for any movements either in the facial or in the periorbital perioral limbs and legs this is a very important this activation procedure to be done and during this activation procedure is there any movements which are not seen without activation procedure to be seen but however whenever you are coding you will be coding one less because this is activation procedure if you are coding for spontaneous the highest severity will be scored for activation procedure one level you will be scoring less if he has a moderate severity you will be scoring as a mild coming to the step six you need to flex and extend the patient arms basically the left and right arms to look for any rigidity and also at the wrist look for any cogwheel rigidity at the same time observe the legs how the patient whether there is any abnormal involuntary movements in the toes here you will be coding both for the upper limb and lower limb you will be coding for is there any choreic movements rapid objectively purposeless irregular spontaneous movements a thetoid movement slow irregular complex serpentine like movements here you are not going to code for the tremor in the lower leg look for any lateral knee movements foot tapping or toe movements inversion aversion of the toe or the legs need to be considered moving to the step number seventh ask the patient to stand up and again observe the patient's from head to toe is there any abnormal abnormal movements moving to the step number eight ask the patient to extend both of his arms with palm facing down so once he does again observe for any abnormal movements in the ninth you will ask the patient to walk few paces that is a, a most probably around 10 meters up and down twice observe is there any problem in the hands movement is there any bradykinesia is there any gait difficulties is there any other abnormal movement is done here you have to do the step number nine twice here you will be also looking for necks shoulders hips any movement abnormality you will be coded here and the finally you will be moving to the global judgment you will be coding for overall severity of the movement that is you may be having perioral maybe periorbital including neck thorax so the overall severity will be scoring in the eighth and in the ninth item how much it is incapacitating him especially with regard to daily activities and finally you'll be looking for the awareness whether he is aware of these abnormal movement whether he is distressed whether it, there is a mild distress it will be two moderate distress three and finally if it is severe distress four and moving to the fifth one is dental status of course in the practical aspects you need to start from asking whether he is having anything inside the mouth whether he has a dental status and whether these movements disappear in sleep or not to be asked so 11th 12th 13th is for dental and 14th to ask whether there is any movement seen whether it gets disappeared during the sleep and in this section you are not coding 1 2 3 4 you will be coding yes or no and finally whether the patient has td or not is based upon the scoring if the patient has mild td that is if you are scoring two in two of the areas then the patient had has td otherwise if the patient is scoring moderate movement in one of the area that is scoring three in ones then it will be considered as tardive dyskinesia or tardive syndrome is present i'll repeat if he has two score that is mild td in two areas of the body td is present or if he's scoring moderate in one of the area that is scoring three in one of the area then he has td to conclude my dear friends aims should not be used as a standalone assessment scale this is used for a screening and roughly to know the severity scale 
Before you use AIM scale, you should do a thorough history taking. Look for the illness, get the good medication history. Was he had abnormal movements before starting the medication? Is there any factors which worsens these abnormal movements? Any symptoms which is worsening after stopping the medication? Is there any comorbid medical condition? And a thorough history taking and thorough general physical examination needs, needs to be done before you, you administer the AIM scale. Ideally, the AIM scale should be done before starting the medication because the literature says at least 10 to 20 percent of the chronic psychotic patient drug nave also have abnormal movements. AIMS is generally not considered as a severity rating scale. Here it is more of screening and a rough severity can be assessed. Higher scores do not indicate he is severely ill because a simple oral TD Perioral movements can cause a severe disability because the patient cannot go outside. Further, the studies have clearly said if a patient has tardive dyskinesia, the chances of his employability is very, very minimal. And with regard to marriage, it is very poor. And the patient has, is aware of these movements, will have severe depression, social phobia, referential thinking, hence the disability is very high. One need to repeat this abnormal involuntary movement scale every time when you touch base the patient. This is very important because the TD fluctuates that is waxing and waning course as seen. Further, before starting any intervention, please do abnormal involuntary movement scale assessment that is before starting an antipsychotic. And you need to repeat this AIM scale especially six months once in first generation antipsychotics, that is typical antipsychotics, annually in second generation antipsychotics. This is idealistic to be done and you need to do especially, especially in a geriatric case. But however, just doing serial abnormal involuntary movement scale is not sufficient. Follow up questions need to be asked. You need to ask for is there any fluctuation in the symptom? fluctuation in the abnormal involuntary movement? Is there any impairment with regard to interference in daily activities such as eating, drinking, speaking, dressing, writing, typing especially in the computer, leisure activities, being in social situation? That needs to be coded because that will clearly indicate how much this abnormal involuntary movement is creating trouble to the patient because at the end of the day, the patient is going to take this medication. And you need to assess the disability, both psychologically, socially, whether he is employable or not, whether he is able to interact with other people or not, how much it is coming in his occupational functioning, at the same time in daily functioning. These need to be assessed. AIM scale is insufficient. Although it is very good scale with regard to screening and to assess the severity, and also to know whether there is an improvement or not. Hence, AIM scale becomes a very important tool, especially in psychiatry. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.